What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a simple pokedex in python so let us get right into it all right so we're going to build a simple graphical user interface pokedex in python and for this i'm going to show you the script that i've already written what it's going to look like in the end when we run it and you're going to see we get the neural nine pokedex of course you can redesign this however you want and for example let's look up charmander charmander load pokemon and you're going to see we get the sprite, we get the number, the name, the type, or the types if there are, uh, if there are multiple types. Um, and yeah, we can also go for a mu, for, ex for example. We can also pass an index, for example, 3 or 566. So it supports also more modern generations, um, as you can see. So this is what we're going to build today. And for this, we're going to need to install two libraries or I think three libraries. And for this, we're going to open up CMD or your terminal of choice. And we're going to say pip install pypokedex. Now, I don't think that this library is too mainstream, to be honest, because it didn't have a lot of stars on, um, on GitHub. But I think this is because not many people are coding something with Pokemon. Uh, but it was quite nicely documented. So I really think this is a professional quote unquote module uh, but we're also going to install pillow. This is what we're going to need in order to handle the sprites. And we're also going to install URL lib three, even though it's already installed for PyPokedex, as you can see here, it's a dependency. So you don't need to install it actually yourself, unless of course you don't install this module, but you're using something else. Or what you can also alternatively do is you can web scrape uh, all the information from a website of your choice yourself. So you don't need to use this Python module if you want to do it yourself. But we're going to use it for today's video. And then we're going to import it, we're going to say import PyPokedex, PyPokedex, import pill.image, I like to import pill.image like that so that the image is not confusing because there are other libraries that also use image. And then sometimes uh, the interpreter is confused and pill image tk alternatively of course you could say from pill import image and image tk we're also going to import tk enter as tk and we're going to import url lib 3 and we're going to import from io import bytes io so this is what we're going to use to handle the bytes because in fact, when we load the sprite from the PyPokedex uh, library here, or when, when we use the function that is going to give us a sprite, it's not going to give us the actual image data, it's going to give us a link to the image and then we need to actually get that image from that link and uh, handle the bytes, which is what we're going to use these two libraries for. So before we get into actual coding or in the actual implementation of the Pokedex, I'm going to show you how you can use that library. So let's say we have Pokemon here, Pokemon equals PyPokedex dot get and uh, or I think it was dot get was it dot get let me just check. Um, yeah, it was dot get. And what we can pass here is either a name or a dex and the dex is the number. So I can say name equals and for example, Charmander. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say print Pokemon. And this is now a uh, an object. So I can go ahead and say Pokemon dot and you can see I get the name, I get the height, I get the base stats, abilities. Um, and we can actually print out a, a bunch of different values here. So Pokemon Dex, Pokemon name, uh, Pokemon abilities, if you want to Pokemon types. And we can run this now. And you're going to see that we got Charmander, Blaze, uh, Solar Power, and I think those are the default abilities, aren't they? Uh, and, the fa uh, and, and also the type. And what we can also do is we can get the link to the sprite. So we can say Pokemon dot sprites, and then we can add another dot and you can see front back or actually we can, we can just print the sprites object for now. So you can see what it contains. And the sprites uh, object has a front. So we have front default, we have female, we have shiny, uh, we have shiny female, we have from the back. So the individual links to those things. And if you want to have a specific one, we just say sprites dot front, for example, 
dot get and we pass default. And then if we do that, we get the link to that uh, particular sprite. And this is what we're going to have to embed into the GUI later on. Now, this shows you that you don't have to be limited by what I showed you, you don't have to just display uh, the name, the type and so on, you can display all these different uh, things here. So also base experience, other sprites, weight, moves, whatever you want, you can just you can just do that. Uh, so this is what we're going to work with here. All right, so let's get started with the graphical user interface, which is going to be most of the work here because the actual getting of the data and uh, structuring the data is going to be done by PyPokedex. So we only need to display it, we only need to integrate it. And the only functionality that we have to do ourselves is actually getting the image, uh, converting it and displaying it in TK Inter. So let's start by saying window, window equals TK dot TK. And then we're going to say window dot geometry is 600 times 500. So this is the or those are the dimensions, window dot title is going to be neural nine Pokedex tutorial, for example, and window dot config is going to be padding x is 10 padding y is 10. This is just optional. So that we have a little bit of a padding and then we're going to see window dot main loop, not main window dot main loop like that. So by executing this, we should see an empty window. There it is. And we're now going to add some basic things like the title label, which is going to be TK label, part of the window text is going to be neural nine Pokedex. And we're going to say title label dot config font is going to be a tuple of the font Arial and the size 32 for the title and title label dot pack with a padding pad x of 10 and pad y of 10 as well. So that is the basic title label. Then we're going to add the image and the data of the Pokemon. So even though we don't have it yet, it's going to be empty in the beginning, we're going to have the label, which is going to be the image. And we're also going to have the information like name, ID and uh, types and so on and whatever you want to add there. So we're going to say Pokemon image, come on, is going to be TK label part of the window, we're not going to set any text. And we're going to say Pokemon image pack. So I'm not sure if actually changing the font size of this is going to change the size of the sprite. I haven't tried this, we're going to maybe try this later on. Uh, but then we're also going to say Pokemon information is going to be TK label part of the window, we're not going to add any text again. And we're going to say Pokemon information dot config is going to be font equals Arial, but we're going to set the font size to 20. And then we're going to say Pokemon information dot pack. We just forgot the padding there. So we need to add the padding, we don't need to add the padding, but I think it looks just better. Um, after that, we can actually just copy all of this. And rename this to types, because we're going to have the by information, I mean, like the ID and the name, and then we're going to have the types, the list of types. And if you want to, you just copy that as well. And you add something like attributes, height, weight, and so on. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's not too complicated to just add more of those. Um, what we're going to do next here, we're actually not going to do it now, but we're going to have to place it here is the function which is going to be used to load the Pokemon. Um, now this is only the case because we're not programming here in an object oriented fashion, we don't have an object or a class here, because then we could just have this method of the class or of the object and we could just refer to all the individual things. But now what we need to do is we need to place it in a situation or at a position where the function can access all these, um, all these labels here, while at the same time also uh, making it possible for the button to refer to the function. So this is important. Uh, we're going to 
put the function here, but we're now going to first have the input. So we're going to say title, uh, not title, sorry, uh, label ID name is going to be tk.label with the text ID or name. And of course, we need to say it's part of the window label ID name dot config is going to be font Arial 20. And label ID name dot pack padding x equals 10 padding y equals 10. Then we're going to have the actual text box. So we're going to say text ID name is going to be tk dot text part of the window. And we're going to have to set the height to one because the text area by default is uh, or has multiple lines. So we are going to say this is just going to have a height of one text ID dot name config is going to have font Arial 20 text ID pack padding as we had it before. And last but not least, we're going to say button equals or button uh, load is going to be tk dot button part of the window text is going to be load Pokemon button load dot uh, config font equals Arial 20 and button load pack padding X and padding Y equals 10. So if we run this and we didn't make any mistakes, yeah, as you can see, we can see the GUI here with the basic thing and we don't have any command yet. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to write that function and assign it to be what is triggered when the button is clicked. All right, so this function is going to be quite simple. We're just going to delete this here and we're going to say def load Pokemon. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get the name or the ID that the user passed into the text box. And for this, we're going to say uh, that we're interested in Pokemon equals pi Pokedex dot get and the name is to be found in the text ID name dot get. So this is the actual text box. And by get we get the uh, content of the text box. And we want to get it from the starting position up until the end position. But we don't want to have the backslash n in the end. So we're going to say uh, and minus one C I think was the right string. Yes. So by doing that, we get the name of the Pokemon, we load the Pokemon, we save it into this object here. And we can now go ahead and get the sprite. So we're going to say HTTP is going to be URL lib three dot pool manager. And we're now going to say the response is going to be HTTP dot request. We're going to send a get request to this link. So to the link of the sprite. Uh, and the link is to be found at Pokemon dot sprites dot front dot get default, unless you want some special skin or sprite. Uh, and this response now is the actual image and we now need to get this image and turn it into bytes and then turn it into a pillow object. So we're going to say image equals pill dot image dot open and we're going to open bytes IO of response dot data. So we're going to get the data of the response, going to turn it into this bytes IO object, and then we're going to use pill to open that image and save it into an object. And to now get this object into TK enter, we need to say image equals pill dot image TK dot photo image of the actual image. And we now say Pokemon image dot config uh, what was it image equals IMG and then Pokemon image dot image equals IMG like that. Then last but not least, what we need to do, of course, is we need to change the text of the other labels. So depending on how many you have, in my case, information types, maybe you add weight and height. Uh, the procedure is the same. You just say Pokemon information dot config and then text equals Pokemon dot, or actually let's do an F string here. We're going to say Pokemon dot Dex, which is the number. And then we're going to say Pokemon dot 
name after that. And then Pokemon types dot config is going to be text f string um and then pokemon dot types now i'm thinking right now if we cannot turn this into a list comprehension so we could go ahead actually now first of all let's see if that works because i think we're done here and then we can see if we can turn this into a list comprehension on the fly so let's enter 12 here uh, we have a oh of course we have a problem because we haven't assigned this function to the button so we need to go ahead and say command equals load Pokemon without calling it so now it should work if we pass 12 it's loading the Pokemon as you can see here so this works uh, now I want to try two things first of all I want to see if changing the font here is doing actually anything so config font equals Arial 20 and let's see if the sprite gets larger than uh, I'm not sure so let's change this to 40 to see if there's any difference not really at least I can't see it so we can delete that and now what we can do is since uh, when we're looking at the types let's pick this one for example you can see grass poison in this list like uh, way we could actually go ahead and uh, try to turn this into a string and or into a whole string which doesn't look so Pythonic and for this I think we could do something like uh, let me just think we can actually go ahead and say something like that dot join and what would we join we would want to join type for type in Pokemon dot types. Would this work? I think it should work. But I'm not sure. What does it say here? Oh, build a name type. So let's just call it T. Like that. Let's see if it works. There you go. So by doing that, you can also manipulate the individual uh, representations. And of course, if you want to have the first letter uh, to be uppercase rather than lowercase, we can just go at the end and say dot title for the title case and dot title here as well. As you can see, now it works. And we can also make this a little bit larger if you want to. You can also look for names, Charmander, for example. There you go. So that is how you build a simple Pokedex in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and 